Grandpa's Shorts. Grandma put down the telephone. The family wants us to join them on a holiday at the beach, she told Grandpa. Oh, a beach holiday? That'll be fun, said Grandpa. We haven't been to the beach for years. I wonder where my shorts are. Have you seen them? he asked. Grandma looked puzzled. What shorts? she said. My beach shorts, said Grandpa. You know the ones. They look like army shorts. I used to wear them at the beach. Ah, oh, they'll have been thrown out years ago, said Grandma. You never wear shorts. Oh, but I used to, replied Grandpa. They'll be here somewhere. I'm going to find them. He searched through all of his drawers. He looked among his shirts he and his underclothes and his pyjamas. Grandma came into the bedroom. What are you doing? There are no shorts in there, she told him as she tidied up his mess. They'll have been thrown out years ago. But Grandpa said, They'll be here somewhere. I'm going to find them. He looked in the cupboard above the wardrobe. He found a box of old photographs. Oh, look at this, he called to Grandma. Here's a picture of me in my beach shorts. Grandma looked at the photo and smiled. They'll have been thrown out years ago, she said. Why not buy a new pair? Grandpa was horrified. What's wrong with my old ones? They'll be here somewhere. I'm going to find them. Grandpa went into the spare room. He found cartons of toys. He found shelves of old books. He found a cat um, asleep on the bed. But nowhere could he find his shorts. Grandma came into the room. What are you doing? There are no shorts in there, she said as she tidied up his mess. They'll have been thrown out years ago. But Grandpa said, they'll be here somewhere. I'm going to find them. He looked in the cupboard, under the stairs. There, hidden away, in the darkest corner, was a dusty old suitcase. Grandpa dragged the suitcase into the hall and opened it and looked inside. It was full of old clothes. He pulled out dresses and baby clothes and an old coat. Then Grandpa pulled out a pair of baggy khaki army shorts with big pockets. I found them, he cried excitedly. I knew they'd be here somewhere. Grandma looked at them and frowned. You can't wear those to the beach, she exclaimed. Why not, said Grandpa. They're just right for the beach. He looked back in the suitcase and pulled out a flowery shirt. Oh no, groaned Grandma. Nobody wears shirts like that anymore. Well, I like it, said Grandpa. Just right for the beach. Grandpa took his beach clothes into the bedroom. Look at this, he said cheerfully a few minutes later. Grandma smiled at him. You can't wear those old things to the beach, she said. Why not? asked Grandpa. They are comfortable and cool. I like them. Just right for the beach. The next day, Grandma washed the flowery shirt and ironed it. She shifted the button on the shorts to make them fit, and she washed and ironed them too. It was a hot, summery day at the beach. The sea was blue and sparkling. The children were playing on the sand. Come and play cricket, Grandpa, they called. Right out, said Grandpa. I'll just get into my beach clothes. Grandpa came out in his shorts and shirt and walked down to the, sea, the beach at the sea. What a surprise. All of the children were wearing baggy, long shorts with big pockets, and all of them were wearing bright, flowery shirts. They looked at Grandpa. Whoa! Where did you get those shorts, Grandpa? Grandpa turned and winked at Grandma. Well, it did take me a while to find them, he said. They're so cool, said the children. 
Grandpa beamed. Yeah, they are cool, he said happily. Just right for the beach. Grandpa Slippers On Monday, Grandma looked at Grandpa's old slippers. Ah, you need new slippers, she said. Those are going to fall to bits. Nonsense, said Grandpa. My slippers are fine. But they have holes in their soles, said Grandma. Good, said Grandpa. That's how I like them. Nevertheless, Grandma bought him a new pair of slippers that day. Grandpa refused to wear them. On Tuesday, Grandpa was cleaning out the cupboard under the stairs when he came upon his old slippers, hidden away in the darkest corner. Leave my slippers alone, he told Grandma. Don't try to hide them. They should be hidden, said Grandma. They're going to fall to bits. They have holes in their soles, and the stitching has come undone. Good, said Grandpa. That's how I like them. On Wednesday, Grandpa was just in time to see Grandma handing his old slippers to a person collecting used clothing. Hey, leave my slippers alone, he told Grandma. Don't try to give them away. They should be given away, said Grandma. They're going to fall to bits. They have holes in their soles, the stitching has come undone, and all the fluff is worn off. Good, said Grandpa. That's how I like them. On Thursday, Grandpa went to check if the rubbish bag had been put out. There, right on the top, were his old slippers. Ah, oh, do leave my slippers alone, he told Grandma. Don't try to throw them away. Ah, they should be thrown away, said Grandma. They're going to fall to bits. They have holes in their soles. The stitching has come undone. All the fluff is worn off. And I can see your toes. Good, said Grandpa. That's how I like them. On Friday... Grandpa took some potato peelings out to the compost heap. There, not quite covered by a cabbage leaf, were his old slippers. Oh, please, leave my slippers alone, he told Grandma. Don't try to bury them in the compost heap. Oh, they should be buried said Grandma. They're going to fall to bits. They have holes in their soles. This, and the stitching has come undone. All the fluff is worn off. And I can see your toes. They're so tatty. Good, said Grandpa. That's how I like them. On Saturday, Grandpa was just about to set fire to a pile of leaves in the garden when suddenly a gust of wind revealed his old slippers. Oh no, said Grandpa, and he told Grandma, Look, once and for all, will you please leave my old slippers alone? Don't try to burn them. Oh, very well, but they should be burned, said Grandma. They're going to fall to bits. They have holes in their soles, the stitching has come undone, all the fluff is worn off, and I can see your toes. They're so tatty, and they look very uncomfortable. Good, said Grandpa. That's how I like them. On Sunday morning, Grandpa got out of bed. He was about to put on his old slippers when they fell to bits in his hands. He had to wear his new slippers instead. They had whole soles, strong stitching, warm fluff covering his toes, and they looked neat and natty. Grandpa was surprised to find oh, that 
they were actually very comfortable indeed. He was very pleased, and so was Grandma. On Monday, Grandma looked at Grandpa's old grey cardigan. Ah, you need a new cardigan, she said. Grandpa's Cat Grandpa came into the bedroom. Oh, the cat's gone, he said. What do you mean it's gone? asked Grandma. She's not there. She's missing, said Grandpa. Oh, she'll be around here somewhere, said Grandma. She always turns up. Have you looked outside? Grandpa went outside. Push, 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 he called. Here, kitty, kitty, kitty. But the cat did not come. Oh, she hadn't even eaten the food in a dish. Oh, where can she be? He asked Grandma. Oh, she'll be around here somewhere, said Grandma. She always turns up. Have you looked in the shed? Grandpa opened the shed. Puss, 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 he called. Here, kitty, kitty, kitty. But the cat did not come. He looked under the bench. He looked high up on the shelves. Oh, she's not there, he said to Grandma. Oh, she'll be around somewhere, said Grandma. She always turns up. Have you looked in the garage? Grandpa looked in the garage. Puss, 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 he called. Here, kitty, kitty, kitty. But the cat did not come. He looked under the car and in the car. He looked in boxes and behind stacks. Oh, she's not there either, he said to Grandma. I wonder where she is. Oh, she'll be around here somewhere. Grandma said, she always turns up. Let's look in the house. Puss, 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 called Grandpa. Here, kitty, kitty, kitty. But the cat did not come. They looked in the cupboard under the stairs. They looked in the spare room. They looked in the wardrobes and under the beds and in the hot water cupboard. Oh, she's not here, said Grandpa. She'll be around somewhere, said Grandma. She always turns up. Let's have another look outside. Push, 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 called Grandpa. Here, kitty, 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 called Grandma. But the cat did not come. They searched the whole garden. They looked under bushes and behind pots, in the compost bin and over the neighbors' fences. The cat was not there. Grandpa was very worried. Oh, we'd better look out on the road, he said sadly. Perhaps she's been hit by a car. Puss, 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 called Grandpa. Here, kitty, 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 called Grandma. But the cat did not come. They walked up and down the road. They asked the neighbours, but nobody had seen the cat. Oh, she'll be around somewhere, said Grandma gently. She always turns up. Grandpa sat on the doorstep. He was very worried. Just then he heard a faint sound. He lifted his head. There it was again. Meow. <gasps> Listen, he called to Grandma. I think I can hear her. I told you she'd turn up, said Grandma. But where is she? Push, 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 he called. Here, kitty, kitty, kitty. Grandpa and Grandma listened. Meow, meow. Oh, that's coming from high up, said Grandma. Grandpa looked at the roof of the house. The cat was not there. He looked at the garage roof and the roof of the shed. The cat was not there either. Suddenly, Grandma called out, oh, I can see her, look, up in the tree. Push, 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 she called. Here, kitty, kitty, kitty. But the cat did not come. Meow, meow. Oh, she can't get down, said Grandpa. Well, you're not going up there, said Grandma. But she's stuck, said Grandpa. 
Well, she got herself up there, Grandma replied, and she can find herself down. Grandpa stood under the tree and called to the cat, Push, push, push! Here, kitty, kitty, kitty! But the cat did not come. It sat in the tree and meowed at him. Ah, oh, I'm going to call the fire brigade, he said. They get cats down from trees. Please yourself, sighed Grandma, but I still think she'll come down when she's ready. She got herself up there, and she'll get herself down. She put the bowl of cat food under the tree. Soon a fire engine arrived, and one fireman got out. Push, 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 called the fireman. Here, kitty, kitty, kitty. But still the cat did not come. All right, up we go, said the fireman. The driver backed the engine near the tree and put up uh, the, tire, the tall ladder. The fireman began to climb. Out of sight, on the other side of the tree, the cat began to climb down. Up, 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 went the fireman. Down, 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 crept the cat. The fireman reached the top of the ladder. Uh, where's the cat? he called. Uh, she's on her way down, I think, Grandpa called. Ah, <sighs> cats grumbled the fireman, and began to climb down the ladder. Slowly and carefully, Grandpa's cat climbed down from branch to branch. The cat and the fireman reached the bottom at the same time. Oh, sorry about that, said Grandpa, embarrassed. The fireman grinned. That's okay, he said, and he got back into the fire engine. Meow, said the cat, and she began to eat. The fireman started the engine with a roar and a rumble, and like a streak of lightning, the cat shot back up the tree. Oh no, wailed Grandpa. What will we do now? Absolutely nothing, laughed Grandma. She got herself up there, and she'll get herself down.